Hello and welcome back to episode 2 of Beyond the Horizon, a series of adventure vlogs by Powerboat and Rib Magazine. In episode 1 we teamed up with James Brooks, a foodie adventure blogger, and we headed off to Hope Cove in the search of finding out how to pimp your beach cooking and maximise that staycation. In episode 2 we head off to the Edston Lighthouse, but before that we have filmed over 100 hours of adventure content this summer which we're going to be rolling out through the winter months to help keep boating alive for you. Here's what's in store. For today though, we want to talk about the Edison Lighthouse. A lighthouse nine miles off Rame Head that if there wasn't a lighthouse there, it would absolutely be disastrous. And it was. Loads of shipwrecks have come a cropper there on this set of rocks, which really, when you're coming from offshore into Plymouth Sound, is right in the way. Now, getting in and out of the rain, trying to load up the car for today's trip, Henley Wynne Stanley was the first guy to build a structure on the Edison Rocks. His lighthouse though, his initial one, lasted only five years, because in 1703 a big storm took out the structure, because it was mostly built of wood. However, some structural changes were made, a new build was constructed, and the next version lasted around about 50 years. However, after these different iterations and modifications to the original design, Trinity House commissioned a new project. The result of this is Smeaton's Tower. The Trinity House Commission gave birth to a design by John Smeaton, and he said it resembled that of an oak tree. He wanted it to have roots and to be firmly established. And for this, he chose a building material of bricks and mortar, rather than necessarily the wooden structures that lay before it and had failed in high, big winds and seas. You can see this today also in Plymouth. On Plymouth Hoe, yes, brick by brick, it was reconstructed. Smeaton's light did its job. It lasted over a century. He was actually quoted as saying that he wanted it to be there not for one ages or two ages, but there in perpetuity. He built it to last, and last it did. Until eventually, it needed to be redesigned and updated. Eventually, it needed to be replaced. It was thought there was a cavern in the rocks, and that with the weather pounding it, and the erosion of the sea, that eventually it would fall in on itself. This was an epic building though and in one of its logbook entries it actually has the lighthouse keeper saying that it was swaying around like a tree in a storm. Imagine that, the absolute power of the sea and you're in this concrete brick building and still it was absolutely taking a battering. Now in 1824 there is recorded a storm that's waves were so powerful and so high that it took out the lanterns in the top and smashed all the glass through the lighthouse. And today you can see Smeaton's Tower up on Plymouth Hoe. It's open to the public and you can go inside. And it's a great thing to go and see and appreciate that this was being built brick by brick out at sea. You'll notice that there is a stub next to the current lighthouse. That is the remains of Smeaton's Tower. It was so strong and so well built 
that the uh, guys that deconstructed it and took it back to uh, the mainland gave up for the last bit. They said that it was as strong and as hard to penetrate as granite. Now, in 1878, there was a new building. Funds were secured for a guy called James Douglas to build a new tower to replace the Smeaton Tower. Now, we had a problem though. Smeaton Tower was still erect and it needed to be dismantled. And the new tower needed to be built. But you couldn't have a transition period because otherwise you'd have a situation where um, ships would be uh, wrecking themselves on the rocks again. So a new plan was needed to be made while they could then construct the new Douglas Tower and at the same time start to bring down the other once it was complete. So they had to build it somewhere else on the reef and that meant building a base from scratch. To do this, Douglas used a process called cofferdam where you sink a hollow tube down to the seafloor or construct one down there, then drain it and get the workers to pack the material into it, such as like stone, rock, rubble, concrete, etc. Once you'd done that, which took about a year or so, he could eventually start building the lighthouse. Now, the new lighthouse stands at 41 meters tall. That's 19 meters taller than the Smeaton Tower. Its walls are like eight and a half feet thick and its brighter lantern at the time was seen 17 miles away. So this was a massive improvement, but a massive undertaking to build it out at sea. On a good day, you can see the Douglas Tower on the horizon. Or if you head out 30 minutes or so offshore, you can visit it and it makes an incredible fishing spot. If you, every time you go there, you'll see a lot of boats dotted around off the reef fishing. We are often as PBR out at the Eddiston, but as Plymouth is our home port, we keep our Axopar 28 at QAB, at Plymouth's Queen Anne's Battery. So therefore for us, it's a short trip of about half an hour or so out to the Eddiston. Here's a few pictures and film from when we were last out. You may notice that whenever we're filming, Aaron is always fishing. He is an absolute addict and uh, it's fantastic to be able to learn from a chap who is a fantastic master at being able to catch fish. He recently went uh, diving on the Eddiston and he loves to spearfish and you can see in this little clip here how many sea bass etc are down there. It's a great place to go and drop a lure in and go fishing on your way into your Cornish boating adventures. So that's a wrap for episode two of Beyond the Horizon. Hope you enjoyed that video. 
we're going to be rolling out a series of different content which we've been shooting in the summer. Yes, we did 100 hours with the Mercury engine on the back of the Axopod 28 this summer. She's just had her service, ready to continue filming through winter, but that content that we've been busy filming will now start to be rolled out through the winter months to keep that boating alive. Some of the stuff that we've got in store while we're going fishing with Smart Fish UK, that's going to be a really cool episode because I know nothing about fishing. I have a rod set up that Aaron gave me and um, I, if I see some fish on the Simrad, I'll have a go. But other than that, I'm kind of potluck. So it's going to be quite cool to experience that and hone in a little bit of extra skill to maximize our boating days on the water. And then we are off on our transit back from Southampton at night showcasing how to do uh, dual band radar on the Simrad and some basic night navigation skills. I'm filming again with Paul Glatzel um, on a series of tuition videos and a whole load more. So stay tuned and we hope that you enjoy the content through this winter to keep boating alive, ready for your next season. And if you are boating this winter, make sure that your boat is uh, serviced and that you have the appropriate safety gear on board for winter boating. It can be very rewarding. I've had some absolutely flat calm days in February and um, nobody else is on the water. Um, so perfect uh, days to be able to get out on the water safely. Just make sure you are sensible and you have your right kit. If you're not feeling the uh, winter boating months, then jump onto our YouTube channel. We're gonna be putting loads of stuff up after the busy summer of filming.